I'm really glad to be with everyone this evening. Um, we're going to be talking about increasing user productivity in Equus Professional. Um, my name is Beth, and I'm with the help desk here. Um, this is an outline of uh, what we're going to look at today. I'm calling this right-clicking in professional because most of the things we're talking about um, are functionalities that, that occur when you right-click um, on, on things in professional. So, um, and one note that I've, I'm going to try to do another um, a second part of this presentation with a little more advanced techniques. Um, uh, I'm not sure when exactly, but um, it, stay tuned for that in the future. So today, um, the first thing we're going to look at is favorites, both in the connection screen, the login screen, and in Equus Professional and um, the user interface, uh, making uh, reports and forms and tables favorites. Uh, we're going to look at the open menu, uh, uh, creating report groups, looking at different uh, ways to access things in the open menu and customize that a little bit. Looking at table views, um, setting your filters, your pins, uh, your column choosers, and looking at ways uh, to sort the data and, and keep the data, only the data you want to see up there and not have a lot of extraneous data that um, takes up space and attention. <laughs> Um, and then finally, we'll look at workspace customization, which will help you maximize your workspace. It's, it's especially nice for those of you with small laptop screens or even on tablets. Or, you know, if you're out in the field and need Access Pro on a tablet or something like that, it's um, nice to be able to maximize your workspace. And a couple other considerations with saving workspaces, et cetera. So let's go ahead and get started with our favorites. Um, two two areas that you can add favorites. The first is in the login menu. Uh, you can uh, set a default facility. You can add favorite facilities, single facilities, or facility groups. And we'll talk a little bit about, um, about this. And then we'll also look at favorites in Crow itself um, in this quick access ribbon here. Um, we'll look at adding different uh, reports and also adding folders, report folders in this Quick access ribbon. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open up professional. Here is my login screen when, uh, menu that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, if you see, there's two icons here. Uh, star with the little green lightning bolt and then just the regular star. The green lightning bolt is your default facility. So um, typically without any default facility or um, when you log in, when you click on the Equus um, EXE, it'll open this up. And you have to open up your database engine, which takes a, a click and a few seconds. And then you have to open up, if you have multiple um, uh, facilities in your database, you have to open that up. If there's a facility group, you have to open that up. Finally, you're in your list of facilities. Um, if you have a long, long list of facilities, you might have to scroll down and find the particular facility you're interested in. So uh, there, we've added the favorites. Um, this is the facility I use every single day, um, all day. So I have added this as my default facility. All you do is right click and um, set it as your default facility, the, the star with the green arrow, um, and the green lightning bolt thing. Um, so that will automatically open up your, um, this facility without uh, opening up this login screen. It bypasses the login screen. Um, if you log into multiple particular facilities uh, quite often, you can add to your favorite facilities. It won't open these by default, but it'll be up in this list here at the top. And that way you don't have to open your database engine, database, facility group, facility. You don't have to go down the line here. It will automatically be there. Another feature you can use here um, is the groups. As you can see here, I created a facility group which contains both facility, both of my facilities here. Um, in the, let me get out of this, in the groups uh, interface here in the edit uh, group of the ribbon, you can create a facility group. So if you have multiple facilities, you can um, create this facility and add group members. Then it will show up here in your connection screen. 
you can right click on here and you can also connect to this as a default for your favorite facilities. So that's pretty nice. Um, one thing to note with facility groups, uh, you typically only have the reports and forms available uh, due to the, uh, you can't have two tables from two different, uh, one table from two different facilities at the same time. There's a lot of uh, conflict that would happen. So we just have the reports and forms um, available for facility groups. So um, the last thing in this menu is this handy little filter bar here. If I wanted to find um, a facility, say, um, I'll just say Springfield, I just start typing it and then it brings up, it looks at facility name here. So it'll bring up that uh, facility if you need to search through a long, long list of, of facilities easily. Okay, so that's it for the login menu. We'll move on to the mini bar or the, um, the quick access toolbar here. Um, as you can see, it already has your uh, connected database here. I'm going to click this little drop down arrow next to the star. These are favorites I've added. And you can add anything here. You can add um, reference tables, data tables, views, reports, forms, whatever you want um, up here. You can add um, to your favorites. And this will. Um, uh, help you access things much quicker uh, rather than going through all the open menus. You can also create little folders here um, to further organize your your um, tables or reports, what have you up here. So I'll show you how to do that very quickly. Super easy. Again, I said this is right clicking in Equus. Um, let's pick um, our facility results. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add to favorites. And I'll say, okay. So I'll go up here and look. And there it is, facility results. Now we're going to look at creating a little folder. It's pretty easy as well. Um, I have my Enviro Insight reports up there. So I'm going to add, um, let's see, I'll add the site diagram here. So we'll throw that in a folder instead this time. So you click on your favorites and then you want to create a new folder. Click OK. It's selected there and it's added. Cancel out and check it just to make sure. And there it is. It added my site diagram. I wanted to make one little note about this. Um, in, in my PowerPoint, um, which will be you'll be able to access that on the YouTube video. Um, I've noted the, the path of the file where you can edit these um, pretty easily. Um, it's in your settings.xml file, which I'll bring up mine real quick here just to show you. Um, so down, it's towards the, the very bottom of the settings XML sheet. Um, under the application section, you'll have all of your favorites listed here. So um, if you want to reorder them, you could change, um, for instance, this caption three, all this whole thing. Um, this is uh, related to that one um, boring log, Enviro Insight boring log. So I can change the number of this if I want it in a different order. Um, if you're adding or taking away uh, reports or tables, you can make sure down here this total, this line right here, this favorite total, that is one more than the total number of reports. So if the last number here is five, you want to make sure that this is six, and that way it'll save save your um, settings. So that's um, that's basically what I want to talk talk about um, for the quick access ribbon and. Um, like I said, you can add tables and other things as well. Okay, now we'll move on to the next topic, which is the open menu. There's a couple of different ways you can select things. You can op open multiple objects at the same time. Uh, there's different ways to access uh, the different objects. And uh, we'll look at uh, creating a report group. I've created one here in the screenshot uh, for my WX. Folder, WQX folder, uh, uh, WQX report. Um, we'll look at creating those groups and subgroups, and then we'll look at opening data tables um, with a filter row. 
for large databases. So the first thing you want to look at is um, this open menu here. If you if you notice, there's uh, you can if say I wanted to open, I just clicked on reports. It's showing me all my reports. But what's I meant to open data tables. Over here, I can click on data tables and it automatically take me there um, instead of having to cancel and click up here on, in the open group. Uh, also, there's the drop down menu. You can do the same thing. You go to system tables. Um, one note uh, is that we hide our system tables uh, to make sure folks that aren't familiar with professional don't wreak havoc <laughs> in the database because um, these are, are pretty important tables that control a lot of what goes on. So, um, uh, like I said, these are the two different ways to access uh, the different items up here in the open menu. You can also right click view and you can list them as icons. If you are, uh, if your eyesight is bad like mine is, <laughs> it's, it might be easier to see these a little more spread out. Um, another handy um, tip is you can shift select or control shift select or control select, um, just like you would a, a file in a file folder in Windows, for instance. So um, say I want to open RT group, RT group number. I'm going to press control or shift, either one, and it's going to select those two. Now I'm going to press control, and I want to open up, um, let's open up RT, um, Remap and remap detail. Okay, and I'm going to press open, and all four of those are going to open without me having to go back and forth and back and forth. So that's really nice, uh, quick little shortcut. Um, in let's talk about this little um, folder we have here. Um, you can create a report group that will group. Uh, your reports together in a folder. So if you have folders that, if you have reports that aren't used a lot, you could put them in a in a folder that says, you know, rarely used reports or something like that. If you have reports for a particular facility, like custom reports for a particular facility, you can say facility ABC report. Um, so any any group of reports that you want to organize, you can throw them in a folder. Um, and you can also create an additional folder within that, that group, which is called a subgroup. Um, so within the WQX um, reports, there are two activity reports. So I created the WQX activity reports um, and a further organized thing. I love organization. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to go into creating these right now because there's some really good documentation. Um, on our help site, and I've pulled up the, the report here. This is the link I've, I've put it in the PowerPoint, so you can access that when it's on YouTube. But for those of you that want to jot it down, um, it's W2382. I'll go. I'll paste it in the chat window here um, for y'all. Um, and this is a really good article, and it. Um, talks about uh, creating groups and subgroups. So, um, you might not be able to see that. Um, if not, then um, you can ask me later and I can send that to you. So, and, and it's also um, easy to create these groups in enterprise. For those of you that use enterprise, it's uh, real easy. You just right click and say add report group. So, um, for those of you you that use enterprise is a lot easier. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about with this menu is our data table functionality. Um, some folks have huge, huge facilities, like over a million records for for one particular facility, and say DC sample would, would be would have over a million records in, in that facility. Um, when you click on a data table, this little open drop down menu uh, pops up. If you select Open Table, by default, it's all rows in a facility. You can um, open all rows in a database if you're subscribed or if you have permissions to that database. Or you can select this, Open Table. What this does, it just it opens up an empty table, no retrieved rows, with just 
the filter bar. So what this does is it allows you to filter for a specific uh, field without opening the table up. And it, for big tables, it'll save you a lot of time, and it'll also um, help you see just what you want to see, nothing more. So what I've done is I um, said starts with B30. I can the filter capabilities in Eclipse are really nice. Um, you can you can see the list here equals does not equal less than greater to start with. I use contains a lot, um, but a uh, lot of logic there. <laughs> so the one trick with uh, opening reports uh, just with a filter row by itself, you have to click on refresh. Um, once you once you set your filters, you click on refresh, and now all my B30 to sample codes, all my to sample codes that start with B30 are shown. Um, so that's that's a really nice um, feature of of uh, professional. Um, and like our trainer training manager Emily always says, <laughs> when in doubt, press refresh. So. It seems to help in quite a bit of the time. Um, so I'm going to go back here. Um, we're going to look at what else. And take note, we're going to talk about this little pop-up menu in, in a little bit. We're going to, I'm going to tell you how to disable this if you don't want to see this. Um, go to our PowerPoint. So we've looked at all this. Next we'll move to um, looking at tables and customizing your tables, how you want to see them uh, with the data, with only the data you want to see, not, nothing, nothing more, um, and saving that view so you can come back to it at a later date. Uh, we're going to look at these three icons on the mini bar, we call it, uh, the filter, the pin, and the column chooser. And then we're going to look at um, a report output where you can create a new date column with a customized date. And also we'll look at group by, filter, group by filtering. Okay, let's get back into professional. I'm going to open a table I like DT sample. So uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the filter icon. If you press the down arrow, you can load a filter that you've saved previously. You can save a current filter. You can clear all your filters. You can also press this button here, and this will clear all your filters all along the row. You can create custom filters, which are really nice. If you click the drop down arrow here, you click on custom. Um, always select any because that will uh, bring back everything that you you filter for. You can add m multiple um, objects to filter for. So I'm going to say equals the 30 and equals the B31, and you can see it's it's already populated with this, so I can just drop down here, press enter, um, and you can see it only produced records here in this row of B30 and B31, which is nice. Then from here, I can save my filter. And it saves it as a XML file. And by default, it puts it in the facility you're in, or you can throw it anywhere you you wish. So, and then come back to it um, when you open this particular table. Um, the next item is your pins. If you click on the little stick pin, you'll see all these sideways pins. If you want to have them stick, you can click the pin, it automatically moves that column over to the left. Now when I scroll, you can see that this look code column is staying put. Um, but the rest of the table is moving. I can also add a um, I do sample date. So now I have two columns here. Kind of handy if you want to compare some columns that are all the way on the left side of the table with other columns that are all the way on the right side of the table. Um, all right, next we have our column chooser. So this column chooser is really handy, has a, a lot of power to it. Uh, when I, one thing I use a lot, hide blanks. It automatically uh, 
hide any columns that are empty. So I'll do that, and you can see those three columns over, that were over here that were empty are automatically hidden, uh, which is nice. Um, you can um, open your dialog here. What this does, you can choose even more columns to hide or show. Say, um, I don't really want to see, I don't want to see my start bit. So I just hid that. Um, and it also shows you like your required fields, which are, which are nice. From here, I can save this configuration. And that way, I can um, access it at a later time. So if I click Save, it'll save it as a CCCS file, um, just for, for your reference. Okay. The next thing I want to look at um, is, uh, I think that's it here. Um, what I'm going to do is run a report. I'm going to do your basic analytical results report. I'm going to Choose a pick report. For those of you um, not familiar with pick reports, um, the report must be published to the database. All of our standard reports are published to the database, so don't have to worry about those. Any of the, the um, add-on reports, like the beta reports, et cetera, you have to publish those to the database. But once they are, then um, you can create pick reports, which are actually saved in the database. So they're accessible to everyone that you, you um, that accesses the database, and you can create a set of parameters here. I've, I've created a location group of monet wells, a matrix of groundwater, and a result group, uh, analyte group. So um, they're quick and easy ways to, to run a report. So I'm going to run that. If you look here, we have um, sample date column. I'm going to right click. and there's a field here called date column. If I click this down, drop down arrow, you can see there's a lot of different date formats. Do the date, day, month, year, year, month, date, year, quarter. There's also some times here, custom times. So I like quarterly because most, uh, a lot of reports like um, Discharge monitoring reports are quarterly, so you don't really care about when exactly it was taken, just the quarter that the sample was taken. So I'm going to uh, select that, hit enter, and it will add this new column here. So this uh, shows you which um, quarter and what date, the quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. It shows you the quarter and the, the year which the sample was taken. And that's very handy. So what this is used for a lot of times, um, other than just printing out this report here, you can also use it in a cross tab. When you create a cross tab, it'll be a, a field you can select for, um, you know, your row headers or your column headers, um, which is uh, very handy. So the last thing I want to look at is this group by functionality. Um, if you right click again, I'm going to right click on syslope code and click on this group by button. If uh, you're familiar with loading data using EDP, you, you'll recognize this. Just drag a header column here to group by that column. I'm going to drag my syslope code column header, this box, into this uh, area. When I do, it sorts all the data um, by my syslope code. So um, you'll when you expand a node, um, you can see that um, all the data pertaining to that syslet code is there. So it's uh, nice to, to just look at, um, at particular data without seeing everything else. Um, in addition, OK, so, so when you expand it, it'll show you the table for that particular syslet code. I can right click here on the, um, the sample date. I'm going to add column, quarter, your year, year, quarter, quarter, quarter. Uh, and then I'm going to further group the syslet codes by the sample date uh, based on year and quarter. You can see quarter one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and 97 and 98. That's the data that's in. Uh, that pertains to this, this slow code. That's very nice. 
easy way to see it. So good thing about Eclipse is it gives you a lot of options as to how you want to view things, whether it's um, through tables or organized by groups like this or in a report form or a cross-tab form, et cetera. So. Okay. Uh, log back into here. So the last thing we're going to discuss is our workspace customization. So um, whenever you have uh, a, you know, a group of tables and reports and a form, for instance, open, you can um, save those as a workspace, uh, close down Eclipse, and reopen it, open that workspace, and load uh, everything you were working on in your previous session. Uh, it's really nice to, to save time to keep from having to open up uh, a bunch of tables and reports again and again. Um, Here's a workspace explorer that has, we'll talk about uh, a couple things, um, features with that. Uh, we'll talk about maximizing the space for, for those of you that have small screens or that like to, to see lots of data in a data table all at once. Um, and then looking at more than one tables at the same time using tab groups. And then also um, adjusting your report parameter selection menu to, um, to maximize it. So, uh, we'll go back to Eclipse. The first thing we'll look at is uh, uh, saving and loading a workspace. So if, say for instance, I have a couple different reports open, and then um, my add tables. Notice I'm using my control click to open multiple tables and reports at once. So I have these. What I can do, I don't want to have to open all those again. So I can click Save Workspace. And this will save all these tables as they are. It's a WXML file for your reference. And it saves it to the particular database you're working in. And I can come back in and open that up. It's really nice. Um, one thing that uh, folks mentioned that that they uh, want to remove uh, that don't use Workspace is that do you want to save Workspace pop-up uh, menu uh, that, that for folks, some folks don't use Workspaces and they don't want they don't want to constantly be reminded to save their Workspace. So um, what you can do, you can set um, make sure this behavior confirmed before exiting is set to false. This is the, the options in the in the Equus menu and also you, you have set, show workspace explorer set to false. I'm not going to do this because we're going to talk about the workspace explorer. So, um, but when you do that, you will no longer be prompted to save your workspace when you get out of Pro. It's one less click folks have to do if they don't use workspaces, so it's kind of handy. Um, I'm all about the one less clicks. <laughs> um, so um, that's really nice to turn that on or off. The next thing um, is another one for those with, with bad sight or that like large images. You can adjust how these um, objects show up here on the left in your Workspace Explorer. Um, keeps, uh, and it, it makes it easier to click on things. You don't have to, to um, click right on the exact words. You can click in the area. Um, also, with this Workspace Explorer, if you have, um, say, I accidentally shut my analytical re results uh, report down. I didn't mean to do that. Um, you can open it back up. Or um, if you want to um, close everything down, um, you can close it all, and then you can open it all back up without having to go through this open menu. So it kind of bypasses that um, for things you use a lot. You can move this workspace around. You can even close it out totally if you don't want it there. This helps maximize your horizontal space. Um, let's see. The next thing we're going to look at, speaking of maximizing space, um, if you right-click up here on the, this, we call this the Eclipse the Home ribbon, uh, you can say minimize the ribbon. And it will minimize that when you hover over and click a uh, tab on this, this ribbon, it will um, display the contents. You can also move this um, click, 
quick access toolbar below the ribbon or move it back up top. So if you're working with a small screen, this is nice. Also, we can look at um, multiple tables. I want to look at DT sample and DT result at the same time. So I grab this tab. I'm left clicking on the tab and I'm dragging it to the left, to the right, and it will create what we call a tab group. So now I can look at DT result and DT sample at the same time, uh, which is really nice. Um, kind of one of those things that's available in Windows 7 that are good to, to drag to the, the edge and resize to half the screen. Similar idea here. Um, you can also drag, um, drag it. Let's see, I want to put it back here. Um, you can drag it down to the bottom, and it'll create uh, horizontal tab groups. You can um, you can put multiple tabs in these groups, or we can um, move it back to where it came from. If you right click on it, you can move it right back. If you right click on it, um, you can also instead of clicking and dragging, you can also just right click and it'll automatically throw it um, over. So that's that's very handy. Um, let's see. Uh, last but not least, last thing we want to look at is our um, results, is our um, report parameter selection menu. So um, this is the parameter selection menu here. Um, if you right click on the toolbar here, you, you have some options. You can hide it. You can float it or you can auto hide it. Uh, you can grab it. You can bring it to the bottom if you prefer to see it at the bottom. You can do that. Um, you can throw it on the left side instead of the right side. Um, you can do a, you can hide it. A lot of things. Um, and it saves all your your um, settings for the next time. So, and then you can float it out. Um, I have it here on my other screen. So, all right. So I think that's what we what I wanted to cover here. Uh, real quick, we're going to recap what we looked at today to hammer it into your brains. <laughs> we looked at uh, creating favorites in the um, login menu, um, the login connection screen, as well as creating favorite reports and uh, menu items. We looked at customizing the open menu, creating, um, uh, selecting multiple objects at the same time, and uh, selecting um, the data table view, which with just the filter row view, as as well as looked at um, how uh, report groups and subgroups work. We looked at custom table views using the filter, the pin column, and the column chooser. We also looked at date column in reports and the group by functionality. And then finally, we looked at workspace customization, um, loading and turning off workspaces and the, the, the workspace explorer, and also maximizing your workspace um, by moving the ribbon, tab groups, and parameter selection menu option um, menu around. So that is all I have. And thank you very much.